Be sure to go to FlipSideGaming.com and use promo code 6 for 10% off on orders over $10. Do the same with the Grizzly Gentleman, 10% off at checkout on your fantastic beard products. Or you could shop via the TCG Player affiliate link in the description down below to help support the show. And last, but of course not least, you can go to Grey Viking Games with the uh, affiliate link below to pillage some sweet arena codes. It is uh, Planeswalker Steric 6 back continuing the new schedule where uh, every weekend we got some good old fashioned death and taxes. Now, oh, you saw nothing. I totally wasn't missing a, a single card in my sideboard. It's fine. Um, death and, we're we're going to be doing death and taxes every Saturday. Uh, of note, I don't think I'm streaming today. I might be uh, on, on Twitch, uh, but I might be streaming tomorrow on Twitch uh, because of scheduling things for Monday's video. Regardless, uh, we're playing some Death and Taxes here, and uh, today we're playing Naya Taxes. So we're taking what, in my opinion, are the best parts of the white-green Taxes deck and the best parts of the white-red Taxes deck, and we're shoving them together. Um, I have seen a uh, different style of, like, Taxes decks on uh, MTG Goldfish that only ran, like, uh, like, four of these total. But I figured this is still, like, fine. Actually, you know what? Uh, go ahead and pop one of those down. And uh, we're actually just going to increase our tithe ticker, which has to be done here, which is stupid, uh, to four. There we go. So yeah, the point of this deck essentially is to uh, be annoying to my opponent while slowly beating them to death with my fangs. We do have Ancient Ziggurat, but I'll talk about the actual deck after we play some games. Uh, just, uh, traditional land tax. Yes. delicious. Marber. Play first. Yeah, I'll keep this. Notably, Thalia is a bit of a Namba with a Bone Crusher Giant's ability, but uh, I don't have red for it anyway. Which, for what it's worth, is probably fine. Okay, Thalia here is going to be very helpful against the uh, the artifact ramp deck. So in my uh, not not test what all oh, right in my uh, mana base testing essentially uh, I I looked at the you know the likelihood of getting certain certain mana at certain points in the game and uh, it didn't take into account the ancient ziggurats so theoretically these should be in like the 90-ish area. We are going to go ahead and attack and we're probably just gonna play Sin Prodder. Yeah, so we were able to stop them from playing a uh, turn two mana accelerant. And we really now have some decent pressure on them. Uh, like, if they just play a uh, a three mana... Interesting, this is a red version. See, that I didn't expect. They abrade the Sin Prod or not the Thalia. Very interesting. So we, we're definitely keeping the, uh, the Knight of Autumn around. I think what I'll do is... I'll go ahead and play the Scoos. I'm going to attack him for two. You have the Knight of Autumn to be able to deal with uh, one of their artifacts. And I, I still assume this is an artifact based deck. So crawling Barons. They, if they kill my Thalia, I can go ahead and consume it. Yeah, they're going to kill my Thalia. That's fine. So I'm still going to be hitting them for 4 damage. Uh, in this in this build, I do not have a way to get uh, things back. I'm absolutely fine eating them. In the Selesny version, I had Renegade Rallyer. And it didn't really perform as well as I'd hoped. I know I'm, I should technically be waiting, but I don't care. Um, so yeah, I'm fine with this scenario. Skyclave Apparition. I 
I think here I just play the Bone Crusher Giant out. Yeah, I'm just gonna play the Bone Crusher Giant. It doesn't modify the clock by like like using the stomp instead. Like it doesn't really do that. Uh, because if I use the stomp, then I'm not getting the four damage from the bone crusher anyway. Like it's still gonna be three turns. Or two turns, sorry, uh, regardless of whether or not I play it. Play a mindstone, that's fine. Play a maze mind tone, also fine. And I might as well eat these. Let's see, scratch top or bottom? Top, okay. And we're going to use the Apparition first. And the reason we're going to use the Apparition first is because the Knight of Autumn can deal with um, larger things. So I think we get rid of the Mind Stone. They already scried to the top. And having like losing two mana to draw is something that I don't care too much about. So we're going to go ahead and attack first. So now they can't target my Bone Crusher Giant. Um, yes, but I will consume the Mind Stone here. This leaves them off of having six mana to do who knows what. I'm actually just going to hold this in my hand. Storm Draft. Unfortunate. Hmm. Okay. So I can blow this up. And make a... 4-3. Top or bottom? So that does imply to me that they're digging a little. We're now running out our last card, so we would like to get a collected company. It's going to be a large boy. Or a girl, in this case. Or, yeah, I assume Knight of Autumn is, like, just the one in front. <laughs> Unless they're all Knights of Autumn. Two, four, six mana here. So we could see Ugin. Nope, Sean. Chandra. I hate the abrades. Ah, okay. They might as well attack. That did not help me. But I'm pretty sure I still have to attack. Maybe it wasn't correct to eat the. Hey, I'm meditating here. Yeah. Okay. So they do go for the, the full trades. Maybe it wasn't correct to eat the mind stone with my apparition. It's very possible that it wasn't correct to do that. But they can start attacking with crawling bears. They can start blocking with crawling bears as well. Say hi to my fiery friends. Jeez. Sin Prada would be great. Bone Crusher Giant would be great. I mean, obviously, you're saying like. But if you if you bone crush giant them, like they'd be dead, but like kinda. 
So what they can do here is they can crew this with Chandra, and then crew this. And that looked like what they're doing. So, I, ooh, they didn't. I don't know, I, I feel like that would have been cool. Tithe Taker doesn't do enough. Buys me a little time? Not really. Okay, feel free to shoot off a blast zone. Jeez, okay. So, at this point, it really needs to just be like Bow Crusher Giant. Not... Why would you crew it like that? Oh, I guess so that they have a blocker for my flyer. Okay. No, they they crew it like this because then they can like. All right, sure. Uh, so now Skyclave Apparition also wins. Skyclave Apparition wins. Uh, definitely not blocking. Bunker Giant wins, Skyclave wins, Ailsid wins. Come on, game. That is unfortunate. Okay. So we'd like more Knight of Autumns. I don't know if we care about any of these. I guess maybe I should just like cut the the lands to twenty two, maybe. I don't I don't love it is the problem. Maybe I could like cut the lands to twenty two and then play a modal DFC card that's a land or a creature or something. It's probable. Is there anything here that I actively don't want? What kind of Miria is great. I guess I just don't need the Yasharn. I just can't Cypher Snow. That's... Yeah, I don't think I need the Yasharn. And I guess I'm going to cut down on Basic Forest? Basic Mountain? Basic Plains? Let's go with Basic Mountain. Sure. Yeah, we got a, we got a bit flooded. Yeah, I tried my best to play to my outs, but uh, unfortunately, my outs were nowhere to be found. I got more than this. <laughs> I will keep this. I don't love it. Uh, I will play a Selfless Savior turn one. I shouldn't have played the Sacred Foundry, obviously, but... Yeah, we'll need a green source. Like, a real green source. Right! I keep forgetting that. These these don't tap for this at all. So, uh, never mind. I'm going to need a lot of mana. Hopefully my Simprodders will help me out. And I can, at the very least, save my Simprotter once. So, people have asked me, for what it's worth, I put the Ancient Ziggurats in here, just because people have asked me uh, in the past why I don't play uh, Ancient Ziggurats in Death and Taxes. And it's because of situations like this, right? Collecting Company is our strongest card. And if we don't have the ability to cast Collecting Company, then we're kind of boned. So, I do. it does look like they're going to be attacking Simprotter here. Attempting to kill it. So it might be a braid, Zack Self of Savior. They abraid again? Nope. Does not appear that way, I guess. Okay. 
Okay, so they're gonna have a lot of mana. And I appreciate none of it. Let's get revealed. Is they gonna take three? They don't, they just give me it. I think I'm gonna save my Skyclay Diversion. Which means I'm just gonna play the other Simprotter. Okay, to attack. They might upbraid me now. So save one damage. Nope. I'll take the full four. Okay. Storm draft. Get my Simprotter around at least. Maybe I should have played the Tide Decker instead of the second Simprotter. Who knows? Another apparition. Okay, they get rid of that one. They take three though. Hmm. I value protecting this Improder. The unfortunate bit. Is that a colorless form of removal is not something I can deal with. Okay. Interesting. You're playing Chain Whirler in our deck with multiple colorless sources. Oh, all right. Give this protection from red. I guess I can apparition the chain roller. I mean, this does have menace. So I'm not sure I even care. So like, I can hit this Karn if I want. I don't think he untaps, does he? No. Okay, what are they getting? We have not played a land yet this turn. That's important to note because it means if they get something that's exactly 6 CMC, it might be worth it to get rid of a Mind Stone. If they get something at 7 CMC. Interesting. Okay, so they do play land though. They give that to me. Cool. Oh, got another land. Let's see. One, two, three, six, seven, eight. So yeah, even if I get rid of this, I'm not going to be able to deal with this. Creatures you control have blah 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 and protection with black and red. So I think what I want to do, I could kill the Karn. Could put my opponent to five, or I can kill this Karn. I think I prefer the idea of killing the Karn, Skyclave the Chain Whirler, and play Selfless Savior. I think that's the best line for me. It minimizes what they can, like, actually do. Okay. So now we put my opponent in a situation where... We're not super resilient to a board wipe because we, we essentially need to keep this around. They play Rekindling Phoenix, which is fine with me because I have a Sin Prodder. That's less fine with me. What are they gonna do with that? You wanna play with fire, huh? Do you wanna play off? Okay. So targets. I'm gonna target. See ya. Okay, I assume they're gonna get rid of that. There's literally no reason to let me keep it. Alright, thanks for the little free land. So I can kill this Chandra. Or I can hit. This does not give lifelink. 
So I do believe the correct decision is to kill the Chandra. Especially since my opponent did a oops. I don't need this. And allowed me. I mean, obviously, if they top take a board wipe, like, I am boned. But there's not much I can do about that at this point. That's absolutely fine. I do not care about that. Sure, it has Vigilance, but this has Menace. Oh, no, I took four. I don't care. They essentially have to give me this card. I wonder if I... Let's see, this is... If I attack with everything, they can only block one of these. So that's... Uh, three, four, five, six, seven. They can block this is the issue. So maybe I just attack with these. Definitely attack with this. I think I just attack with these as well. You get to block one of them. So I get through for five. End of the turn. Hope my opponent doesn't have a board wipe. Not a board wipe. Do they mind stone? Looks like they're cracking a mind stone. They have one more, uh, two more mind stone cracks? No, one more mind stone crack, technically. Crack the mind stone. They can't crack another one without going below four mana. Okay, so they're only at three mana. They might have a three mana board wipe. They might have, like, Anger of the Gods or something. Did they get it? Oh, they can't because of Thalia! So even if they do have Anger of the Gods, they can't. And they take the three. Oh, okay. Okay, let's see. I, mean, I guess technically Grafters of Cage could be fine, but I don't think I care. Maybe instead of Scoos, I should be running Tomic. Hmm. No, no, I don't think so. This is probably still fine. Hmm. I'm gonna keep this. Let's just collect the company enough. I put it mulliganed once. It's fine with me. Okay, game. Thank you for the mana I need to cast collect the company on turn four. I love a Thalia here. You might ask why I'm um, playing these instead of Ziggurat. I want to be able to collect the company on turn four. Not turn five, not turn six, turn four. My opponent does here. The next turn, I probably will play this untapped and play this. Play like both of these. Trying to figure out what they're gonna do here. Interesting. I'm st I'm still going to play the Thalia here. I do think, generally speaking, Thalia is better. Um, Yeah, my opponent didn't miss a land drop, right? I played a land every turn, they went first. No, they didn't. Okay. They only have four 
mana. I pay four mana for a Sharon. I've learned a bunch of new burn spells to try on you. Sure. We can do this together. I could just apparition this and go face. One, two, three, four. I think that's what I'm gonna do. I'll play this taps. Apparition this Chandra. So my opponent only has two cards in hand right now. Next time, so it's very helpful for us. And we would keep the apparition alive. Throw a board wipe. Okay, still only two cards in hand. They cast Sarkin for six. Okay. I assume you make a dragon. Magnificent! Okay, I'll pass a turn. Depending on what our opponent does, we collect a company even after we uh, get hit for four. Spike field hazard. Um, I'm going to keep Thalia alive. That's a pretty bad. I can use that to survive. Come on. I had to attack there. So it's just big red. It's not actually an artifact there. But, I mean, I guess I should have, like, realized, but... Power. The attack with dual cast mage was bad. Like, not even a little bad. It was very, very bad. I mean, I, I could even just first strike it with uh, Thalia. Kindling Phoenix, but I still need something decent here. Another apparition would be great. Ashkin, you shall receive. So we cast apparition. Do we cast apparition on? Five. 
Damn. So, let's see, I can cast Apparition on Rekindling Phoenix. I'm gonna kill the Sarkin. Alternatively, I can cast Skyclave Apparition on the Dragon. Which would, like, allow me to attack, but it wouldn't actually force a killer. No, I think the best decision here is hit the Rekindling Phoenix. Obviously, it just makes it in a bad situation with forward wipes. Um, then we move to combat. This can't live, unfortunately, so I have to attack like that. But I can't attack like that. Listen to them roar! <laughs> Watch this! Dragon does not lose. Okay. One, two creatures in the graveyard. So I can make this a seven, seven. I can go up to seven life. Another mind stone costs three. That's fine. Blast zone. Scary. Once they put it to three. don't think my opponent should attack here. I could be wrong, but I, I feel like my opponent shouldn't attack. Because my opponent keeps all of these at bay. Yeah, I'm not sure I agree with that, to be honest. I'm just going to eat these now. So be down to three. So I will still need a way... Of dealing with that. Uh, or we could just you know, draw Knight of Autumn or something. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. would rather die than lose. Damn. I guess my opponent was uh, looking to win the game, not uh, not lose. And we had a stop deck of land. Damn. Honestly, opponent, good game. I didn't I really didn't like the mana situation. Now we're gonna go to the deck talk. So in general, I like the combination of the, the red and green elements. Um the collected company and the scavenging news obviously are just fantastic cards that green brings us. And Bone Crusher Giant provides reach, as does Sin Prodder. Not only does it provide reach, but it also provides card advantage. Um I hate Ancient Zigrunt. <laughs> I, I hope that this has really made it clear uh, that even in a deck that only runs literally four, like literally only four non-creatures, um, if that non-creature card is strong enough that you never want to not cast it as soon as you have the ability to, um, I, I don't think it's worth running the Ziggurat. Like, I, I can probably still make a mana base that is fine with this makeup. Um, that said, 23 appears to be too much. Um... So let's do land, I guess. And we got a scroll, because basics are included for some... Fu oh, wait, no, stupid, I could just do this. Instead of rising. <laughs> All right, let's see. So I guess I could, like, theoretically look at some of these. Uh, you know, this isn't awful. Technically speaking, this might not be awful, because then, like, if you flood out, you actually get something. Um, I don't... Even in this deck, I don't like Valkyrie Awakening... Ballard, Balaged Recovery isn't terrible because you can, like, get Collected Company back. Uh, da, 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 turn Timber 
I think I, since I don't have like the green, I would rather just have the white one. But yeah, that's kind of like it. So if I were to make changes, actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this. I'll make changes. Um, I would completely cut out the Ziggurats. Well, you know, I should talk about the actual deck first. So first of all, we got the, our protection in the form of Aelsid and Selfless Savior. Uh, they're both good for different things. Um, I do like the fact that Aelsid can be used proactively in order to make it so that you can get an attack through uh, a defended position. Whereas Selfless Savior, obviously, you don't have to hold up mana. Um, Thalia is just great at disrupting opponents' uh, game plans. There's a lot of decks that... There are plenty of decks that are running mostly creatures. Um, but the fact that Thalia has a first strike means that she can help in those matchups too, but mostly she can just disrupt, um, any other game plan, right? That's using uh, creatures, uh, especially the artifact based ramp decks. If you're able to play Thalia out before they can get their two mana accelerant, uh, it can be absolutely d debilitating. Tide Taker, just a very annoying card. If it goes, if it dies, you get a creature, which is helpful. Um, it taxes your opponents on your turn. It's just great. Three Scavenging goes. Plenty of uh, graveyard shenanigans happening in, in Historic right now. This helps against all of them. It also is just like a way to kind of gain life. It's cool. Um, Arcade of Mirror, we didn't actually see, uh, but it just means that your your opponent's non-basics have to come and tapped. And it also means that your opponent can't do multiple things in a single turn. For what it's worth, you can't do things in a single, uh, you can't do multiple things in a single turn either. So the turn you're casting this, if you have enough mana to cast two things, cast the other thing first. <laughs> Be sure to cast the other thing first. Uh, Skycall Evaporation, it's it's the removal that we have. Paired with Night of Autumn, which is other removal, it, it's a decent combination. Um, the issue is always, if we lose our Skycall Evaporation, then our opponent is going to get something, and potentially it's going to mean that we get screwed, we lose. Uh, but, you know, you do have to factor that in. Bonecrusher Giant and Simprotter, as I said, do provide some great stuff. Uh, Giant provides some very helpful reach. It also means that we can kill early game uh, threats or just early game annoying creatures uh, while having a late game body that is nothing to scoff at. And then Simprotter, the fact that this card has menace just cannot be overstated. In a deck like ours, where we're really just trying to kind of nickel and dime our opponent over the course of a game uh, to where at some point they just kind of die, uh, Simprotter helps us continue to hit them nickels. Um, Collective Company, this is, this, I mean, this is the majority of our deck right here in the three drop slot. We also got twos and we got ones. The only main deck card, cards that aren't, uh, that aren't hittable by Collective Company are the other companies, Yasharn and these. Now, why are we playing a main deck Yasharn? Uh, because main deck Yasharn is cool, uh, but also it helps against these sacrifice decks. Cyborg, we got two Graphic Cage against any Graveyard decks, but also against Goblins. Uh, one Rest in Peace as an additional hate against, uh, Graveyard decks. We may be able to get rid of, um... Probably the rest in peace since we do have main deck scavenging uses, uh, but I haven't come up against. I mean, the fact that I haven't come up against graveyard decks means that I probably don't need the rest in peace. Uh, I do want to maintain the graph Digger's cage, uh, just because it does help uh, extra against like goblins and stuff. Um, but I'm, I'm not sure. I guess two tomic. This does apparently help against Nissa, uh, but in general, it's just like also a, a good two mana card that helps against flying decks. Can Jolly Summoning can come in against literally any creature deck. Uh, Rampaging Frostodon can come in against the life gain decks. Uh, or decks that like spam token or something. Extra Knight of Autumns because them artifact decks. And then Vala Keeper of Silence helps against a lot of combo decks. Uh, creature based combo decks often require your creatures to be tapping or something. Lend Vala helps with that. And then extra Yasharns against those annoying decks. Now, if I were to change this, we're getting rid of the uh, the Ancient Degrats. Okay. Uh, we're going to probably only go back up by three lands but i don't know what those lands should be also i think i i don't think i care about this because i really like i think it's gonna be just balagad recovery because being able to late game buy back a collected company or even just like anything of yours I think is the most valuable thing here. And I'm not saying that it's like objectively valuable in a deck like this. I just think that of the th of the options we have access to right now, it might be the best. The second best in my opinion is Amiria's Call because we are white based anyway. Like this is a, a tapped green source, but we are white based anyway. And making it so our creatures are indestructible until my next turn is quite nice. So, like, this is definitely the contention for uh, number two. Let me know if you think that this is going to be better than Balaged Recovery. 
Uh, especially since this can enter untapped. Um, beyond that, then you want to modify the uh, want to modify the lands that allow you to cast cards. Um, so we do want. Let's see. Now that we don't have the ziggurat, we're gonna want probably more green and red. But I don't think I want to hurt my white at all. This is yeah the three. So I think what I want is two scattered groves. One one scattered groves. Scattered groves for what it's worth also cycles, which is great. It's very helpful. Uh, we definitely want some number of scattered groves. I hate the fact that I'm cycling through these scattered groves yes I want at least one and the reason we only have one is because of Balagad recovery for red though like there's technically the temples maybe inspiring vantage here because we don't have we don't have razor verge thicket maybe we could do something like this this might be fine. And then out of the sideboard, we, we didn't we only got to play one uh, one match, unfortunately. But uh, this is this is an every Saturday thing. Every Saturday you're getting death and taxes. Might not be this exact deck. In fact, let me know what you want to see out of death and taxes um, in the the coming days. But yeah, I think this is how I would change it. Um, this is the deck list that I'm going to put on Aether Hub. Uh, the deck list in the description will be the actual deck that I played. It went to profile because I got I, I clicked wrong. Anyway. Once again, I have a patron. Uh, I do have a patron, but we'll get to that in a second. I have a PO box. Feel free to send me things. I will. I will open it on camera, even if it's like meme stuff, like a fucking katana or something. I. I. I am waiting for the day that someone sends me a freaking sword. Abigail is going to freak out. But I would also like to thank my lovely patrons, especially Fogwin, Malik, and Balatar. If you'd like to join them and support the show, you find links in the description down below. And of course, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, like, comment, subscribe, and I said, of course, twice. Whatever. Until next time, I'll be one.